Okay, this is day two. Um, it's literally the next day. So when I say day two, some of this stuff is not like sequential days. Some of it is going to be broken up by like, it might be three, four days in between, but it's the second session. I'm showing you here. It's the exact same setup. I'm literally working on my computer in my kitchen. I've got Ellie on place next to me. I put her on place, Makina on place here for the second day. You'll see I made some adjustments to her setup. No towel or blanket. Just the straight dog bone bed here. Um, way less distractions for her to fool around with. But you'll see right away she's a little more unsettled to start out with. A little feisty, actually. This is a lot longer session. This is going to end up being 28 minutes of this. And it literally was, my hope was to be able to work on my computer and have her fall asleep next to me on it. For 28 straight minutes, I had to watch her. Ah, 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 ah. Ina. On day two, I learned a little more about how much pressure she, t she takes and accepts. That was a much firmer correction on that first mistake than I had done the day before. The reason is, is I just put my toe in the water the day before I experimented. What does it take? I would rather err on the idea of being too soft because I can always firm up than being too hard on a dog that is soft and creating some trust issues. And really all I'm doing is trying to get this dog to trust me the first few days back home. So look at the change that happened there uh, after I corrected her. She settled down. She sat down. It lasted 15 seconds, which is about her attention span, and then she's on to fooling around again. So the beauty of place training is I don't care what she does on this place as long as she does it on the place. She just can't get into much trouble here. And so if she wants to bite her tail, if she wants to flip around, if she wants to, it's too much for me to ask her to sit still for any duration. We, we see that. It's clear. But for me to ask her to be relatively still in a confined area without the ability to get into stuff, allows her to do this fooling around, allows her to flip around, spin around, be a puppy, but it doesn't allow for undesirable things to develop like getting into stuff, chewing on stuff, having accidents, doing things that I can't control. So eventually we're gonna have this dog where we put her in place and I don't pay attention to her. In fact, as I record this, she's sitting on a place behind me and I feel 100% confident that she's not getting into anything and she's curled up nicely. But this is weeks later. So as we watch these very first few episodes, I want you to see that it doesn't always go immediately smooth. It's a combination of putting the right amount of correction on, the right amount of praise, and timing it really well is the key. You have to anticipate every little inch. This little foot that's hanging off, if it touches the ground and I allow it to happen, that foot will be down all the time. So I have to really balance, and that's where the the place itself creates the perimeter. It's elevated and it's very defined. She physically has to step off of it in order to be off and that allows me a very clear understanding of timing of when to put correction on and when to praise. Now I'm just watching her and starting to learn her personality a little. I'm looking for, pers for changes in her behavior. Deep sighs are really nice. It tells me she's giving in. She doesn't do it very often, especially early on. Here I just show you, I'm literally sitting in front of my computer. This is something I'm doing daily, um, very often, and I can get training in at the same time. Now in the background you hear my water softener running and cycling as well. That's interesting to her. For a while here I ran into issues with the dishwasher we're running. She was spooky about that. You'll see as the series goes on, there's a few th quirks that this dog has that I figure out quickly that create issues and then I have to figure out okay how do I fix them how do I get past them because I can't have a dog that's spooky about stuff so this subtle little noise in the background it's actually kind of a nice thing for her to hear be curious and interested in but also not understand that it's a flag of any sort that she has to be nervous about this is a really nice change right here There's a nice little body language thing. Yawn, kind of rest a second, but watch what'll happen. It'll pass. These puppies will entertain themselves in any way that they can, especially because they no longer have litter mates. They're by themselves. This is the, this is probably the, we brought her home on a Sunday. This is probably within 
day or two of us getting her home. So it's probably the second or third day. So she's only been away from six other litter mates for a couple days before we started this. So she's not used to necessarily this lifestyle. But I think the key is fitting them into the lifestyle early on, it makes it a lot easier. The quicker you start forming good habits, the quicker they form and the quicker it becomes normal. doing what she's doing right now I do think we have to be concerned with if she starts getting so spastic with it she flops off and I miss it you lose the opportunity um, to get good timing on a correction here this is a perfect example of like she's met her, met her limit as far as patience and she decides well I'll try to instigate something so I'll start barking at something I'll start yipping at something I'll start pawing at something that's a real tester yesterday she'd have jumped off at that point today she reaches out and kind of tempts me to say "Ooh, am I towing the line here no, I didn't think she was coming off, so I didn't respond. I don't want her to start thinking she can trigger action by misbehaving. So I ignore a lot of this. But I'm, I ignore it from a reactionary standpoint. I'm 100% dialed into the behavior. So if she's coming off, I'm correcting. If she's being good, I'm either leaving her alone or praising at the right moments. I'm not going to praise her when she's antsy. I'll praise her when she settles. I think you can see there, she barks and says, did that do anything? Did that change anything? I whine a little bit, does that change it? Does it get me anything? She's trying to get something. She's trying to get something different. Because she's not into just doing nothing. Because she's an eight week old puppy, nine week old puppy. I want my dogs to get into the idea of, let's do nothing and be okay with it. This is where cultural stuff is so important. Seven feet away from her, or less, I should say, probably six feet away from her, is a Labrador Retriever sleeping or laying there with, his eye, with her eyes open looking at her. So she sees around her that things just aren't going to happen very fast paced around here. And eventually she's going to start to be a chameleon and fit into the environment. Or it's going to be really uncomfortable for her. But it's a change, that's for sure. Early on sessions like this require 100% attention. You can't, you can't relax and let her fail. So here I got a, a dog dreaming. So that's Ellie, she's dreaming. She's yipping in her sleep. She's going, what in the hell is this all about? Perfect little distraction for her. How is she gonna respond to that? She goes, hmm. And actually, I think she's a little timid there because she hears her in her sleep, and I think it sounds like she's growling at her. She's not. She's sleeping and having dreams. But that little puppy's very sensitive to that growly type behavior. And you'll see more of that in the future here in some of these series, why I know that. But you saw her. She, she physically moved away from her. She laid her ears back a little bit. She kind of thought, what did I do? And now it's a really good change. <clears throat> That's worth noting to her. Good. Let her know that's really good. She dreamt so hard she woke herself up. This little puppy looks at that and goes, Man, look at that dog just lay there. I 
mark that. So like, I didn't want to talk because I didn't want to get her excited. So that's why I put my hand out there. I just wanted to, you to see that's what I'm looking for. But you'll also notice that that lasts about 30 seconds and then she decides, well, I want to change this too. So eventually, the more often you do this, the more frequently you do this, the more consistently you do this, the quicker the dog gives into this behavior and goes, I know what this, I know what's happening. I know what's coming next, nothing. I might as well get comfortable. But as a young puppy, she says, eh, maybe I'll try something over here. I want to do something different. They're big on wanting to be changing, but that's just attention. That's just an attention span. It's just the ability to focus or a lack of ability to focus. And that's understandable. Here's where destructive behavior just doesn't happen when you isolate them to a bed. They can't do anything, they can't wreck anything. Here's a test. Nah, uh, uh. No, ma'am. Quick time, quick reaction. She goes, oh God, he's watching me. <coughs> she says, oh, that was, I got his attention. Let's, wanna fight? You wanna play? You wanna do this? You wanna do that? No, I'm gonna ignore you. And remember, second time this dog's been on the bed. This is a pretty long session, but she just did all right with it. So I kept going with it. A lot of this stuff, Ben's gonna fast forward through some of it um, because it does get long and, and there's good, st good stretches and not such good stretches. I apologize again for the phone, but I literally wanted to start tr filming this stuff immediately. So that's why you have the vertical um, look right now because I did this off my phone. I also did a lot of in this series, early, especially early on and throughout, we're gonna be using different tools like my phone, a GoPro, and then the guys with the cameras because at times it's gonna be very beneficial, I think, for you to see the spur of the moment type stuff. And that, I think, is very important. Uh, it's not very fancy. So you'll have to take the good with the bad when it comes to that in this series. Another thing I should talk about is taking her on and off. You're gonna notice that I never let her jump off when we're done. I never let her, I never call her off the place. I have, I still don't. We're 16 weeks into it with her and I still do not allow her to get off the bed. If she wants to get on it herself, that's fine. If I'm having her in the house, she gets on it. I don't have an issue with her placing herself. She can't come off of it. I think that's a consistency thing. We did a complete podcast about this because people couldn't believe the, the ability for her to stay on that place. It comes down to the fact that she doesn't think she can get off of it ever because I don't ever confuse her with it. I don't like the idea of dogs getting on and off on their own. That's why I never let them do it. Eventually I'll call them off when they understand the concept, but early on you're just defeating the purpose if you allow them to get off of the bed at some point after they've been taught to stay on the bed. So never, I never call them off of it. I never allow them to get off of it and finish a session. I'm literally picking them up physically and I can set them down on the ground right next to it, but they don't get on and off by themselves. They don't choose when to get off ever. If you're super consistent, you'll be amazed at how quickly they realize there's just no other way. There she got bored with whatever it is she was doing fooling around with that rail and now she looks at me and goes huh? can we do something different yet no we're doing good
but in one day's time you see a difference. And I think part of it is because of the setup as well. That blanket created an issue the next the day before. One less thing for her to f mess up with. Again, my thought was that with her, it would help her curl up and settle in quicker. With some dogs, I think putting a blanket down, they'll just nest into it. And that's what I was thinking would happen with her. It didn't. Some dogs, it might work better. So there's no black and white like rules on this. You gotta experiment and adjust accordingly. Another reason we're doing the narration the way we're doing it is because I literally don't talk to the dogs usually when I'm working with them. The only time I'm talking is when the cameras are around. So these are another reason why we're trying to do cameras on phones and GoPro type footage because you're going to get a lot clearer vision of what it looks like when I train the dog by myself, which is normally how it's done. Um, this voiceover adds another step to it, but it's something that I just think we, we talked about it. We think it's important um, for various reasons, but you'll notice I don't, I don't talk to her much. Um, there's, no, there's, there's a ton of communication going on, and every time she's looking at me, we're communicating. She's reading my body language, and I'm reading hers, but we don't have to say much. Here she's getting feisty and wants to test me. You can just see that was coming. In those moments when we start laughing at our puppies, when we start thinking that's really cute, that's the reason they're really annoying in a couple months because they start doing that to us and we go, man, I just can't stand it when she does that to me. You asked for it when they were eight weeks old by encouraging it and not discouraging it. It doesn't always have to be negative pressure, but at a minimum it has to be neutral. You can't respond to it. That was a pretty nice little change right there. But now she's bored. Whenever that dog goes to the edge like that, I'm 100% focused and ready to move. Um, if she were to jump there, I gotta be able to catch her by the time those feet hit the ground in order for that correction to make any sense. So here, I'm. she's away from me. If she were over on my side, it'd be much more relaxed. She's on the opposite side. It's a, so you can see me physically moving and shifting in case she makes a move. There's a nice change in her behavior, just that yawn. So this has been, that was a real nice little block of, Ben's probably gonna fast forward through a lot of it, but it was a nice block of like, behavior that was acceptable. Yeah, I'll let you bite in your tail, I'll let you scratch, I'll let you move around. I prefer that over chewing on the rails of the bed or digging or scratching at the bed. I prefer all that. And she almost t tired herself out with it. And then a yawn and now a nice little stretch of, I'll oh, just lay here. This is really a benefit. That was a real beneficial couple minute stretch there. It wouldn't have been a bad time to give her a nice little good. Right about here. Good. Just so she knows it's good. Not enough to get her excited though. 
but that changed quickly because now all of a sudden she's going, eh, I don't want to just lay here anymore. It's going pretty long, but the reason I'm continuing it is because things are going pretty good <coughs> as compared to yesterday the, or the day before. As things went on, it was kind of spiraling the wrong direction, so we ended it. This, it seemed to be continually improving. She was building off of what I would say she did yesterday in a positive way. So I let it go a little bit further. There's no set time to this. If this had been really good and all of a sudden it started to amp up at eight minutes, nine minutes, 10 minutes into it, I might have ended it there. But I kept it going because you can see there's some pretty nice improvement taking place. I want to encourage that and let that happen. I would really like her to curl up and fall asleep. That'd be perfect. Then she might stay there for another hour. You can kind of see there's just a contentment about her right now. She's, she's given in. She said, I think I'll just rest. That's what we're looking for. Now you can hear in the background another dog dreaming, sleeping and dreaming. And she's a little confused by it. But the beauty of this is it's not stirring her up. Here's where I show it's a it's an environmental thing. That's what she sees. That's the behavior she sees out of her her roommates. And so it becomes so frequent and so ingrained and such a part of life that she can't help but fit into that mold. So that's a session. And I, I wrap that up. I put her away. I let her sleep on that.